his family and making music with his family. Sometimes uh, artists are just there, it's them and the band, the family is left at home to fend for themselves while they're out on the road many, many weekends and days of, of the year. But Tom has taken his whole family with him when he goes out because they're part of the band and part of the support team. How are you, Tom? I am well, thank you. How are you? All right. Y'all are based out of Indiana. Yep, in central Indiana. And are down here. You were singing at Park Avenue United Methodist and uh, dinner and concert the other night. And right now you're headed back to Indiana or you got other places to go? Uh, we're going to be in North Georgia on Sunday and then headed back to Indiana after that. And North Georgia and South Georgia are opposite ends of the pole, I guess yeah. you've noticed. <laughs> yep. Down here, we're almost in Florida, so it's pretty well the Flatwoods. North Georgia is like being up in Tennessee or whatever, the mountains. Uh, tell us about your family. Who's in your family? And uh, Well, my wife, Lisa, and then I've got three children. Kaylin is 16, Maggie is 15, and Jonathan is 13. And uh, they make up the band now, so that's, that's a lot of fun. They've sang with me ever since they've been little. Um, but uh, about a year and a half ago, the kids started playing in the band with me. It's become a family ministry. Okay, you have, when we first got CDs, it was Tom Fry and Damascus Road, and you've moved from that now to having your children. It's just Tom Fry or Tom Fry and the family. Correct. Now, are, they, are you, um, Maggie, are y'all homeschooled? Yeah. That makes it easy to travel, right? Yeah, it does. Um, so, we, this time we didn't bring any books with us, but sometimes when we go, we'll take some math or history or whatever. But we have been reading in the car. <laughs> Well, if you read, that's that's doing a lot. Okay, that is doing a lot. Um, you're probably on spring break, right? Yeah, it is. Um, this is, has been kind of a spring break for us, I guess you could say. Have you all visited anything around, or do you just go from one concert to the next? Well, uh, this time uh, we actually took four days off. We went to the beach and got to enjoy that because there's not really any beaches in Indiana, so that was, that was very nice. And then uh, we actually went to Disney for three days. The kids had never been there, and we thought, well, we're close, and we got some time off. So so that's what we've just come from right. for a concert at Park Avenue last night. Well, we always laugh. Uh, Valdosta is the last stop before Mickey Mouse World. <laughs> there are a lot of people stop here. I don't know if you notice there's a lot of eating places and oh, yeah. hotels there yeah. on the uh, interstate because this is where you stop. Um, how did you get into ministry, Tom? Uh, kicking and screaming probably is, <laughs> is the, the short answer. Um, I really never thought I'd be in ministry, especially music ministry, but um, uh, when I got out of college, I came home uh, to the little church I grew up in, and our pastor had had passed away, and his son came to stay for uh, just an interim, and ended up staying for 13 years. And his son had been a full-time touring independent Christian artist, and so uh, this is a church of like 35 people, and so all of a sudden here's this guy that's learned to play guitar in college, and he's back home, and so he really just poured himself into me. And um, so he really inspired the music um, aspect of what I did, and then actually a friend of his who would fill in as our pastor, when, when Pastor Marty had to be gone, really inspired uh, me um, with ministry. He just was a very passionate, is a very passionate man. And um, I really never wanted to be in ministry. Uh, ministry wasn't anything that was terribly, um, uh, my family wasn't terribly excited about, I guess. And so um, to see this passion and see this, this man who really wanted to make a difference in people's lives by exposing them to Christ um, was all of a sudden God started to move and so the two just kind of meshed I guess and uh, people started asking me to come and sing and, and my response was well I don't do that I don't do that and then um, I read a book called An Arrow Pointing to Heaven which was about Rich Mullins life and uh, just seeing how Rich used his music uh, to really serve the kingdom um, was, was very inspiring to me just said, okay, God, you know, if you want me to do this, people are telling me I need to do it. Uh, you, you make the way because I don't know how to do it. Music doesn't make sense to me as far as my involvement. And churches started asking, and so then I said, well, I, 
guess I'm doing this. So, <laughs> so that's really uh, you know how I got started doing it, and the kids were young when all of that um, started happening. So they would come up and sing a song or two with me, and it's just kind of grown now into uh, a family ministry. It's not really what we had set out to do, but I'm certainly glad it's worked that way. You never know where God's going to lead you. Uh, my husband started out in the forestry, putting out fires. Oh wow! And now he's pastor and starting fires <laughs> we're trying so you never know where God's going to lead and I like that exposing people to Christ it, a lot of times you think of ministry as I'm getting up there and I'm telling people about me or I'm doing this I'm, I'm performing but yours was exposing people to Christ um, and that happens a lot not just behind a microphone either doesn't it right, right. I think that's just part of Whether we're in a restaurant, you know, how we treat the waitresses, how we treat the people that serve us, I think, says a lot about ministry. And um, so I think it's really important to, to realize. I had a, had a friend one time who was at a restaurant, and uh, he told me that uh, the waitress said, oh, I hate it when people do that. And he said, what? And she said, pray. Those people are good at praying. And, and he said, why, do you have something against, uh, you know, people who pray? And she said, no, but they're usually the worst tippers. Hmm. and the people that serve us really says a lot about the Christ that we're representing. All right. So ministry is every day, all day. Yes. Um, all right. Um, Maggie, when you got into this, uh, you were just a little kid? About how old do you remember? Yeah, um, I was probably... Five or six? Maybe. Yeah, I was going to say. Quite were, a while ago. <laughs> were you nervous? up here working and he had a little girl about Maggie's age and the, the guy that was running the, the coffee house said that he was really missing his daughter and so Maggie and him sat and just kind of laughed together and drew pictures and, and counted, uh, to 200. counted to 200 yeah. <laughs> but he said that was just so he, he really ministered to him you know just to have this little girl about his daughter's age uh, even though they really couldn't communicate you know but smiles and laughter is uh transcends all languages and so that was yeah so she's never been afraid to talk to people okay well good now you've got one cd out or probably a couple you know under damascus road and all but y'all are working on a new one yes yes uh we're working up we're just trying to finish the uh, uh raising the finances i guess to uh to finish this new album and i'm i'm really excited about this because uh it kind of reflects a lot more of the fi family dynamic of what we're doing uh, the kids were involved on most of the songs as far as background vocals and um, certainly in the performance and the concert and part of the band now. But um, about a year ago, I went to Nashville and spent some time co-writing with a couple of my friends down there. And they really challenged me to uh, just use my story uh, 
in my writing. I said, you know, when we listen to the songs that you've done so far, we know, people know how you think and they know how you feel, but they really don't know who you are. And so we want to tell your story of, you know, what, how Christ has impacted you and your life very personally. And uh, they said that will resonate with people. And I've seen that wisdom as we've performed the songs. Uh, now I wrote a song for my wife and wrote a song for church family and, and, um, and a friend that I lost a few years ago. And just very personal songs about God's faithfulness in spite of circumstance. Uh, about when are y'all looking to have this finished? I mean, you know, you can always say, we're going to have it done at this time, but that doesn't usually happen. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, we're hoping May, that's kind of the target date, and so um, it, everything kind of is rolling toward that, but um, it really just depends on you know, how the finances come in to wrap it up. So. I know your wife, Lisa, was saying that it really uh, helped a lot that the uh, some of the, the man in, in Nashville came to your house in Indiana rather than hauling yourself and your wife and three kids down to Nashville. Yes, um, a lot of the, the recording instrument-wise was done in Nashville. And uh, we did about a third of the vocals down there, but the, the majority of them were actually done in our house um, in Indiana and just brought the equipment up, um, with, you know, just the same microphones and, and condensers and all this st sort of equipment that I really am kind of oblivious to, but, but it was stuff that, you know, was from the, from the studio. Matter of fact, um, my producer said, well, you know, this thing that you're singing through right now is the same... The same thing that Chris Rice and Mac Powell and everybody's vocals have gone through for their stuff. So I mean, it was it was good equipment, and and um, it, but it was a lot of fun, you know, just getting to transform our home into a recording studio. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking forward to that. Now you did tell me, Tom, y'all going to be back down here in October in the fall when things are a little cooler, and there isn't going to be any pine pollen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My oldest daughter has a, a little allergy issue. So we got down here, and she really didn't know what hit her, but we found out it was the pine pollen. And, but yeah, plans are to come back down in October, so we're working on you know bookings in, in that time right now. So if there's any of the listeners that would like to bring us in, you know, for a concert or church service, or you know even to speak, I do some speaking uh, just on the importance of, of family and, and family ministry. And, and I was really challenged a few years ago uh, by a friend of mine when I was doing a lot of volunteer work our community with, um, you know, civic organizations, United Way and such, that were are good organizations, um, and also a lot of volunteer work inside our church, and uh, the music was starting to take off, and I was feeling very stretched, and, uh, and uh, one of my friends said, don't forget that your family is your first ministry, and it really just kind of made me step back and reprioritize how I do things, and and so I've seen God's faithfulness when, uh, when Lisa and I really didn't know for sure how to raise our kids to be to be godly uh, young people, and uh, certainly didn't know how to approach uh, child raising from a ministry standpoint. But uh, we had people along the way that uh, helped us and gave us little nuggets, or maybe big nuggets, um, just to uh, just to help us understand that. And so that's really become a passion of ours too. And so I've done some speaking. Like speak to a, a family group or a homeschool group or whatever the case may be as well. All right. Your website is tomfry.net and fry is spelled F-R-Y with an E, mm -hmm. tomfry.net. The easier way or the easy way is to go to waft.org and right there on our artist page you can look it up under Tom. <laughs> T. I, I discovered that. No, it was F. That was right. I went to T for Tom, and it, it's under F for Fry. So it's TomFry.net, and find out about the family and pictures when the next um, CD will be ready. Listen to some of the music. Of course, you can hear it right here on WAFT. And if you're looking for some projects in October and you're going to need uh, somebody to come in and sing for you, they'd be glad to hear from you. Anything else, Tom? I would just like to thank you guys for your support, you know, what you do for uh, Christian artists like myself and also for this community just helping to be, you know, salt and light right here in, in uh, South Georgia and North Florida. So I appreciate uh, you guys letting us stop in and uh, it's been great talking with you. All right. We've been talking to Tom Fry. And that
website is Tom Fry with an E dot net.